Isn't God good? Come on, church, let me hear it. Isn't God good? Sing, who is moving? Who is moving on the waters? Who is holding up the moon? 
who is peeling back the darkness with the burning light of noon who is standing who is standing on the mountains who is on the earth below who is bigger than the heaven And the lover of my soul, Creator God. Creator God, He is Yahweh. The great I am, He is Yahweh. The Lord of all, He is Yahweh. I rose up, Sharon, He is Yahweh. The righteous Son, He is Yahweh. It's three in one, He is Yahweh. Who is he? Who is he that makes me happy? Who is he that gives me peace? Who is he that brings me comfort? Turns the bitter into sweet. Who is stirring? Who is stirring up my passion? Who is rising? Who is rising up in me? Who is feeling of my hunger? Who is everything I need? Creator God, He is Yahweh. Great I am, He is Yahweh, the Lord of all, He is Yahweh. Rose of Sharon, He is Yahweh, the righteous Son, He is Yahweh, the three in one, He is Yahweh, the Creator God, Creator God, He is Yahweh, the Great I am, He is Yahweh, the Lord of Yahweh Rose of Sharon, He is Yahweh The righteous Son, He is Yahweh The three in one, He is Yahweh Come on, this morning we declare, Lord, that you are God, that you are creator God, that through everything that's happening around us, you still reign sovereign, you are still king, and you are still good. Sing it out, church, creator God, the voices. Creator God, he is Yahweh, the great I am, he is Yahweh, the Lord of all, he is Rose of Sharon, he is Yahweh, the righteous son, he is Yahweh, the three in one, he is Yahweh. Creator God, he is Yahweh, the great I am, he is Yahweh, the Lord of all, he is Yahweh. Rose of Sharon, he is Yahweh. The righteous son, he is Yahweh. The three in one, he is Yahweh. Sing it out, Yahweh. Yahweh.
Pray to God, He is Yahweh. Great I am, He is Yahweh. Lord of all, He is Yahweh. Of Sharon, he is Yahweh. The righteous son, he is Yahweh. The three in one, he is Yahweh. Yeah, come on, let's good Lord shout praise. This morning I was just having some preparing for this morning, just with God and me, and I was I was in Luke. I've shared this with the team and a couple people, but I just want to share it with, with, with you about the, the woman who was healed on the Sabbath for 18 years. She was bent over with a disability. And some of us in here have some kind of sickness or some kind of addiction, whatever the case may be. And I just want to say I've got good news for you. As Jesus saw her he sees you. And as Jesus called her, he calls you to come and get that healing, to come and be set free from that bondage. But we have to do what the woman did. We have to believe and we have to respond. So Jesus, I thank you that no matter what trial we're facing, You are still in control. Thank you for promising us that whatever tribulation we face, and we will face tribulation, but you have already overcome it. Jesus, today would you help us respond to that call to be set free from whatever we're going through.
church. He reigns. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. Be lifted up. Lifted higher. I sing praises to your name. Praises to your name. The names that so much higher than all names. All honor. And all Be lifted. 
Sing it out, church. Let our praises fill this temple. Let our praises fill this temple because He is good. Amen. Let our praises fill this temple. Let our praises fill this temple let our praises fill this temple for you are good come on sing it out let our praises fill this temple let our praises fill this temple let our praises fill this temple. You are good. Oh, let our praise. Let our praises fill this temple. Let our praises fill this temple. I just have a strong sense that there's people that here in the church, in the fellowship today, you've been in the middle or you're in the middle of some very serious battles in some way, physically, relationally, I, find, I don't know what they are, but you, you want to just say today with your voice, with your heart, with your life, be lifted up right here, Jesus. Be lifted up right here. If that's you, you just come stand at the front right up here by faith and just lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, just right at the front and say, Lord, I'm just declaring right now in the middle of my hardship, 
in the middle of my pain, in the middle of whatever I'm going through, I'm going to say, be lifted up right here, right now. I'm not waiting for another moment. I'm saying, right here, right now, I'm declaring that Jesus is going to be lifted up right here, right now. Come on. There's, there's many more. Come on. Stand right here. Arms held high in victory. He lifts it yeah. up. In victory. Be lifted higher. Right here, right now, Lord. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. 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 And let our praises fill the temple. Let our praises fill the temple. Yeah. For you are good. Let our praises, let our praises fill the temple. Let our praises fill the temple. Let our praises fill the temple. For you are good. so we can see you. Dave wanted to share a testimony. Let's just stay in this attitude of worship and prayer. And, and he's, he's worthy, isn't he? He's worthy. Amen. God is worthy. I just want to share, when, when Pastor Trey was talking about um, going through a difficult time and not really knowing what's happening, that's something that just happened to me. In uh, December, about the 16th, the owner of my company came to me and said, we're going to sell your division. And I've got 40 people that work for me there. And I'm thinking, oh, Jesus. He said, come up with a separation plan over the next 19 months of how we can transition this thing out. So as a good employee, I worked on that plan. But I prayed. And God gave me a scripture. And I shared it with my um, direct supervisor. And then at the end of January, we met with the owner. And I said... And I shared the scripture, I shared what God has, had given me. And he said, you know something? We're not gonna sell this, we're gonna keep it, we're gonna put you in charge and responsible for it, and we're gonna see this thing build and grow. And I wanna share that with you this morning, because God is well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine according to the power that works within us, even the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. So don't give up hope and don't think it's not going to happen because God is able. Amen. So thank you, David. All right, come on. He's worthy. This verse on Friday night at our Friday night prayer meeting, which was incredible how the Holy Spirit was moving at Friday night prayer. The Lord kept bringing this verse to me. It's Psalm 22, 7. It says, you are enthroned. Yeah, no, stay up here. Let's stay up here. Let's just worship a little more. We're not done declaring he's worthy of our, of our praise during the middle of the trial. You are, I'm going to say this and you repeat it back to me. You are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In our language, that means when you begin to praise him, he comes close to you, right? When they translated this into to Japanese, they translated, when you begin to praise him, God brings a throne and sits right down in the middle of you. Amen? Some of us, we, we've, been, we've been kind of stuffy and, and blocked in and, and distracted by a lot of our problems. We just need to worship a little bit and declare, Jesus, you're worthy of all I've been through. I want to declare you're worth it, God. I'm not a victim. We're victors, God. We're victors in you. We want to worship you, Jesus. Come on. Let's stand on our feet, lift our hands. Let's declare he's worthy. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. 
to you are all things you deserve the glory you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all and to you are all things you deserve the glory come on let's declare that you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all jesus for from you are all things time you're worthy of it all you're worthy of it all from you are all things to you are all things you deserve the glory come on come on let's praise him amen you're worthy, Lord. Come on. Let's pray a little bit. Just stay where you are. Let's pray a little bit. Let's pray for our nation. We've had one of the worst school shootings. The worst school shooting in the history of America happened this week in Florida, Parkland, Florida. We've been asked to join with uh, churches across America, but lifting up this community, also lifting up our community for the Holy Spirit to come and work a mighty work with the devil meant for harm. God to turn for good for the saving of many lives. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's begin to intercede. You want to? Let's just lift our hands up. Lord, come on, let's, let's all begin to cry out for Parkland, Florida, for God to move among the, those people, to help the grieving. Come on, begin to cry out. You've grieved before. Come on, begin to cry out for this community. Oh, Lord, we cry out for Parkland, Florida today. Oh, Lord. sing one more time. Be lifted up. We're going to sing. Be lifted up over Parkland, Florida. We're going to sing that, that God will be lifted up over Austin, Texas, over all the schools here that to protect our children. Not only did it protect them, but the Holy Spirit would begin to break in. We can't kick God out of schools and have anything great go on. Let's pray the Holy Spirit would invade these schools. Come on. Let's sing. Be lifted up over our schools. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher Be lifted up Be lifted higher Jesus Be lifted up Be lifted higher Right. 
so I think it was, yeah, it was like Thursday morning. You know, I'm in transition too between careers, <laughs> career shift. My heart was heavy that morning, and I um, got got with look, the Lord um, Jesus, and He came to me, and he, he He gave me a new garment. He said, "Deanna, I'm giving you the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness." And He told me to release it to y'all. So anyone who wants that, you have it. So wow. my garment was a robe, a red robe, with purple tapestry ribbon which means passion, red is for passion. So if you're ready to receive a garment, Jesus, Yeshua is ready to give you a garment. Jesus. A new garment of praise that you can put on any time you want when your heart is heavy. So Lord Jesus, just Jesus. like you gave me the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, I release to your people that same garment of praise and just picture yourself taking that from Jesus and putting it on you. Just do it in faith. Put that garment of praise on. So I thank you, Lord, for giving your people an actual garment, a robe of praise we receive that it, they Lord. can put on any time they want. We receive it, Lord. <laughs> for a spirit of heaviness. We receive it, Lord. That breaks any yoke in any despair we receive in it, Jesus Lord. name amen oh, let our praises fill this temple For you are good Let our praises fill this temple Let our praises fill this temple Let our praises fill this temple For you are good over and pray for the person next to you. Lord, would you release the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness? Lord, would you let them put on the garment, Lord? Every day, every moment, when they found themselves drifting, let them put on the garment of praise, Lord. When they can't figure it out, let them put on the garment of praise. When they don't have an answer, let them put on the garment of praise, Lord. When they don't have any faith, Lord, let them say, that's okay, I'm putting on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Oh, Lord, overtake your people, Lord. Overtake your people, Holy Spirit. Overtake your people, Lord. Overtake us, Lord, with your great love, your great power. He'll attack you at the point of your calling so hard that you just feel like there's no hope and you want to give up. There's nothing to even, even try for anymore because it's too far gone. I got news for you. Not only is that not true, the opposite is true. The devil knows he comes in. He comes in with, a, with, with, with his great terror upon you. But God raises up a standard against him. Amen? And God, net, God, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. To taking captive every thought that, that raises itself up against the knowledge of God and making it obedient to Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That no weapon formed against us will prosper. Thank you, Lord. This is the heritage of the Lord. This is the heritage of the children of the Lord. This is our heritage. We say yes to that, Lord. We say yes to our victory that is yours, Jesus. We say yes. We will walk in the train of your victory, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We believe the truth, Lord. The truth is that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We believe the truth, Lord, that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That we are the ones who overcome the world. We overcome the world by our faith. We believe the truth, Lord. 
We believe the truth. Forgive us for rehearsing a lie. We believe the truth. You are the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Before we transition, let's just, let's just thank the Lord. Let's just praise Him. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you. We praise you, God. I praise you. I praise you in the midst of the congregation, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you just greet someone before you sit down? Just say hello. Just learn a name or something before you sit down. All right. I want to dismiss the youth for our youth class. So if you're a teenager here and you want to go to the middle school, high school, Sunday school class, head out this uh, door and you'll follow right there. Got a few announcements. Number one, say number one. Anybody that's worked with the children in 2017 or 2018, doesn't matter if you're not working with them now, we want to say thank you to you. We're having a dessert at our house on Friday night at uh, Mary Ann and I's house, and so we want you to come, and we want you to let us know you're coming, so we'll prepare for you, so you can email me or you can let us know today. So if you've been working with the children anytime in 2017 or 2018, come to our house Friday night. It'll be awesome. How many are thankful for our children's workers, huh? Yeah, we're so thankful. Number two, we're going to baptize next week. So if you, if you want to be, if you've accepted Christ and haven't been uh, baptized yet, we want to do that. By the door, um, by the little boxes where the offering goes above it, there's some little white cards. You can write, I want to be baptized on it. You can also email me. Um, you can also just show up on Sunday, but we'd like to know you're coming to be baptized. Um, also, uh, on March 1st, at the bottom left down there, we're doing a citywide prayer meeting in Round Rock. We believe that the Round Rock churches are really unified there. We're joining them. We're going to be praying for, for spiritual awakening. This is a very serious matter. Because, you know, uh, Linda Ravenhill said, we, we don't have revival because we're willing to live without it. And so we know that the, the verse that God gave us years ago long time ago, but he gave this church that if his people, if my people are called by his name, all right, that's us, say that's us, will humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, that he would hear those prayers, that he'd forgive the sin and he'd begin to heal our land. So I want you to join with me on March 1st in Round Rock at Central Baptist. It's right off 620 and it's going to be an incredible prayer meeting. Bring your family, bring your prayer group, bring, bring everybody you can to that. It's going to be an incredible time. Um, um, is Stephen here? Stephen, come on up here. Tell us about something happening next week. And uh, Stephen Carlock. Let's give Stephen a hand as he walks nice and slowly up here. <laughs> sorry, sorry. What can I say? Um, can I share a revelation before I do the announcement? It'll make it longer than 30 seconds. You have to. All right. You have to share a revelation. <laughs> <laughs> so um, God has me in a place of correction right now where he's taking a lot of time to get me back on the correct path of things that I thought wrongly about. And I thank him for that, and I rejoice in that. And I was spending time with him yesterday, um, and I was just out reading his word, and, and God began to minister to me about his, his fatherhood over me. And I wanted to encourage everybody with this, because I feel like it's not just me he wants to speak that to. Um, so the cool thing about God is he never changes. 
who he is today is who he was billions of years ago, beyond our imagination, and who he will be for all of eternity. And that's who God is. And God is always all of himself all the time. Mm -hmm. And I've always known God as my Lord, and I've always known God as my master, and I've known God as my creator. But I forget oftentimes that God is my father. Mm -hmm. I self-condemn, and I live kind of under guilt and condemnation to the point where a lot of my life I've thought that God was my father when I was clean. God was my father when I confessed. God was my father when I was walking in righteousness. But God revealed to me that he has been a father for all of eternity, even before children existed. Mm -hmm. Because God doesn't just have character traits that come and go. If God is something, that is his being. Mm -hmm. So if God is a father today, he has always been a father. God is so much a father that before creation existed, before children existed, when there was no precedent for fatherhood, it was existent. It was self-contained within him. And when God created me and when he created all of you, God was satisfying his being in doing that. Mm. And what God has shown me is that God is deeply satisfied in his children. I just want to encourage all of you that you are children of God. You know, we sing a lot of worship songs about how we're children. I sang those for years. I've been a believer for years, singing good, good father. And you're a good father, and it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, and it's who I am. But truly, God is your father. Amen. Before fatherhood existed, anywhere else it existed in him. So I just want to encourage you in that and ask that you press into that and not miss that he is your father. How many of so, you think that was okay you shared that? That was all praise right. Praise the Lord for that. That's all right. Um, so what I really came up here to do is I'm part of uh, what they call an A-team that supports a certain missionary couple who's out in the field. So you all probably all know Colin and Caitlin Sikora. We sent them out to Haiti about 10 months ago. Um, so they're coming back, and they're actually coming back not just for the short term, they're going to come back for a longer period of time. And there's a long story to it, and find me after church if you want to know all the details, but the gist of the story is that they sold everything, they got rid of everything, quit their jobs, gave their dogs away, everything went, because they were committed to serving the Lord in Haiti for the rest of their lives. Unfortunately, the ministry that called them out misrepresented its heart. It misrepresented its heart. And like the church in Sardis, we just read around a couple weeks ago in Revelation, it had a reputation for life, but the reality was much less. And after a lot of deliberation and in a somewhat in confusion, they feel like the Lord is telling them that their time there is finished, it's complete, and they're coming back and they're trusting the Lord. We have a great opportunity. We send out a lot, but it's not often that we welcome back. And we have an opportunity to welcome them back and to help them out. I said that they sold everything. It's all gone. The financial provision has been spent in honor of the Lord. They're coming back to the U.S. for a period of time to regroup, to figure out what's next because their life is committed to missions and they really don't have enough to get back on their feet. And so March 4th is honor to them and honor to their work for the Lord and honor to God for what he did through them and their obedience. We're going to have a luncheon and I would just encourage you all to stay because all the proceeds are going to go towards helping them to get back on their feet and to be reestablished here for the time that they need to be until they go out again. So that's my announcement. The end. Good job, Ralph. You did good. <clears throat> April 1st is Easter. It's coming soon. We've never done this, but we're going to do a, like a choir ensemble that day. There's going to be a song, people that are going to sing. Deborah, stand up Deborah and Dave Jacobs. They're going to be leading this. It's not, we're not going to, we're not going to have like a choir service. That's not really us. We are going to have an ensemble choir that's going to sing a song that day. And they're going to be rehearsals March 4th, 11th and 18th and the 31st. If you, if you would like information, um, you can speak with uh, Deborah or Dave about that. And you're just say, put me on the list. I want to, I want to be a part of this. And uh, that would be very cool. It's going to be a great, great time to, to do to see something special. We want, you know what we want at Easter? We want people to come to know Jesus. And so I'm going to be preaching on, a, I'm going to start a new series, which I, I think I'm going to write a book on called Loved. And the, the number one thing I, when I sit down with people, because that's what I do a lot is meet with people, and is that most, every one of us, needs to know how loved we are by God. That seems to be the issue that, that is uh, plaguing most people. Because what we do is we get in the middle of our hardships and we see how big they are and then we begin questioning our love and our sufficiency and all that stuff. 
And so we need to, uh, that, that big old view of God's love being the foundation of our lives. How many know what I'm talking about? Somebody preaching on Easter Sunday on the prodigal son. And we're going to kick off a series called Loved. And we want to encourage you to be reaching out to people that you know that need uh, exactly what Stephen talked about. They need to know the Father's love. They don't know it. They thought, I'm going to go party. And, get it. and they get out there and they realize there's nothing out there. It's death. And so they want to, we want them to come back home. And so this Easter, we'd love to see. We want you to start praying with us. Come to the prayer meetings Tuesday and Friday and Sunday morning and Thursday night. Come and start praying. Let's start praying. Let's turn between now and Easter a time of intercession. We begin to intercede for the prodigals to come home and the lost to be saved. Amen? Amen. How many believe that will be a good thing to do? Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, I don't know about you, but... It, it's, it's hard not to get calloused when, you, when all these shootings happen and, and just, just almost think, well, there's another one. What is going on in our nation? Within the last year or so, there's been 18 school shootings. And there's something wrong. There's something broken in America. And uh, we, we have to acknowledge our brokenness so that we can get healed. The, the Lord, last Saturday, I don't know about you, but... When sometimes the, when, when the Lord ever brings a scripture to your mind, please go open it and look it up because that means he's got something he's doing there. Last Saturday, I was, just, I was reading a book. I think it was Charles Finney's memoirs. I was just reading it. And I don't know if it was even in there or some other book I was reading. All of a sudden, this verse came, and it was about 2 Corinthians. It was about how the devil masquerades as, as an angel of light. He masquerades. He, he, dis, he, he comes in disguise. And when, he, when, when I saw that verse, I knew I had to go look at it, and I had, to, I had to dig into it, and the Lord showed me that the devil doesn't even like who he is, that's why he masquerades himself. He, he hates who he is, he hates himself. He masquerades because he wants to deceive, he, he comes in deception. He comes to pretend he's light, but he's darkness. But, but many of us get, get caught where we are because we pretend. You see, we don't... We, we have this religious thing in America that we come to church and we pretend we're okay, all right? We pretend, I'm all right. Hey, how are you doing, brother? I'm all right. I'm good. And deep down, you're dying. Deep down, you're like, I don't even know if I can make it out the door. I'm so dying. You see, the way to freedom, okay, let me just let me start with the bad news. The way to be like the enemy is to disguise yourself and masquerade. And you masquerade, you'll become more and more what the enemy is, fall more and more into darkness and bondage when you masquerade. But when you come into the light and you say, you know what, I'm broken, I'm messed up, I don't know what to do, I'm confused, and all of a sudden the light of God begins to come, answers begin to come, hope begins to come. Somebody's going to begin to start praying over you and you're going to see God move the minute you bring your thing that you were masquerading about and disguising into the light and all of a sudden there's hope. Because Jesus Christ begins to work a work in the light. I got like two amens and there are two ladies over there on that side of the church. That's all we got. But he says in 1 John that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we'll have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us. We got to walk in the light. We got to come in the light. No, no, nobody here is perfect. Your pastor, I struggle like you struggle. I gotta, we got to bring our stuff to the light. We got we to admit it. We got to confess it. We got to say, Jesus, we need help. How many know what I'm talking about? This is the, this is the hope of the world. The, the prayer rooms will be filled when people know how broken we are and that God has answers. It's not enough just to understand how broken we are, but that God has an answer. Our brokenness is meant to lead us to an answer that is greater than our brokenness. Our brokenness is meant to lead us to healing, amen? Every sickness you see, we're going to go and we're going to ask God to bring healing to it. Every mental disorder, every problem, every, every marriage issue, God's got a solution for it. Amen? We're just getting warmed up here, but we're getting there, right? And this is leading us into this message that, that deals with the four soils. It's a parable. We're going to be, keep looking at parables all the way up until Easter. And Easter will be, a, will be a parable as well. It'll be a story that Jesus told. And we'll launch that new series. But, so here's two ways to look at this parable. Right? 
One is this. There's th- four soils. Three of them are unfruitful. All right? So I believe this is a correct way to look at it. I believe there's two correct ways to look at it. I'm going to tell you both of them. One is we got three soils that don't produce anything. All three of those aren't believers. All right? There's only one soil that became a believer, and that's the one who produced fruit, right? So that, that's one way to view this, and we'll view it like that. And some of us need to view it like that today and say, you know what? If I don't have any fruit in my life, and there's no fruit in my heart, and there's no fruit, then I need to see where I am. I need to, how many know it's good to say, I'm not a believer, but I want to be a believer. I want to be healed. I've been in church all these years, and now I want to be delivered and saved and healed and delivered in Jesus' name. Like John Wesley and his brother, they were preaching. John Wesley was a missionary to America out of England, and he wasn't even saved. And he was on a, a boat going back to England from America, and the, the, the storm hit so badly that he thought he was going to die. When you start thinking you're going to die, you start thinking a little bit more about Jesus. He looks over, and he sees these Moravian Christians sitting there having worship and prayer and studying their Bibles in the middle of the storm. And he looks over, and he goes, he's terrified. He thinks, he's, whatever they have, I don't have. And he went back home and he began to meet with the Moravians. And he was at a Moravian meeting when they were reading scripture or reading something. And he said his heart was strangely warmed. After years and years, I can't remember how many years, but it was several years in the ministry, he wasn't even saved. But he was a pastor and a missionary. You hear what I'm saying? All right. So the other way to look at this parable is this, and this is a a correct way to look at it, and we're going to look at it this way too, and that is that there are people in this room that you are saved, but these things that happen to the soil that, that don't produce fruit happens to you a lot. These things, you're, you're born again, but you, you've gotten stifled, you've gotten, you, you've, you've, you've plateaued, and the reason is found in these scriptures today, why you've plateaued. Why you're not producing fruit is found right here. So look at them. Don't say, well, I'm a believer, so I need to look. No, look at them again and say, how come I'm not producing a hundredfold? How come I'm not producing a hundredfold? How come there's not fruit come out of my life? And we're going to see the answers here. How many are saying, Lord, speak to me, huh? I know you could speak to, I know you could hear for your husband or your wife or your friend. I know that they got some real serious issues. I know they do. But I want, how many say, Lord, speak to me today, huh? As he began to teach beside the sea, a very large, and a very large crowd gathered about him, he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea, and the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he was teaching them in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, listen, behold, a sower went out, and he sowed, and some seed fell along the path, and birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on the rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up. And said, since it had no depth of soil, and it sprang up since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and yielded no grain. And other seeds fell in good soil, say good soil, and produced grain growing up and increasing, increasing, say increasing, and yielding 30 and 60 and 100 fold. And he said, who has ears to hear, let him hear. And then he, there's a few passages in between here, but here's where he begins to interpret the, this parable for us. The sower is the word. The sower sows the word. The sower is Jesus. He sows the word, which is the word of the seeds. And these are the ones along the path where the word is sown and they hear and Satan immediately comes and what? Takes away the word that was sown in them. Number one, write this down. First soil is the soil that's on the path. They hear, they hear, but Satan steals the word. They hear, but Satan steals the word. Isn't it interesting that each one of these soils, they hear, they go to church, they may even do their quiet time, they may listen to sermons, they may listen to Bible, they hear, but they don't hear. They hear, but they don't tra- aren't transformed. It's kind of like what, what Paul said to Timothy, 
There's people that are going to be ever hearing but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. They keep hearing because their heart is evil. It's bent on other things. They're not open to the Word of God or believers that are, it's just really not that important. I mean, you can come sit and listen to a message that convicts you and go home and be unchanged by it and unmoved by it. And and you don't think about it when you go home. That's dangerous. Very dangerous. Wherever you go to church, I know there's people here from out of town and you go to different places. You better listen to what the Word of God is saying through the one who preaches. You better get into it. You better let the Lord speak to you because it's something God wants to say to you that He wants to change you. But if you can go home unchanged by it and unthinking about it, then there's very much danger that the enemy has come and stolen that Word from you. The enemy loves to steal the Word. He loves for us to go to church and do what we think is a religious thing and then for the word to be stolen from us. He loves it because he doesn't, you know, Satan, he, he, he's okay if we just come here and do our little religious thing. He, he doesn't want us to go out of here and be changed. He doesn't want us to go out of here different. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to know what I'm talking about. So the first soil hears the word and the enemy takes it. He steals it from him. Their hearts are hard. The Word of God's not penetrating their hearts. They don't think about it. They're not moved by it. You know, I was reading the other day and I read this quote that said that conviction, the conviction of the Lord is like medicine to heal our broken heart. Whenever someone's sick and you say, hey brother, can I give you some medicine and this medicine's going to heal you? I don't want that! What are you trying to put this religious thing on me, giving me this medicine? No, no, the medicine is meant to heal you. And correction from the Lord is medicine. But when you don't want to take your medicine, you don't take the medicine of the Lord, then you won't be healed because the the world has no way to heal you. So the enemy just comes and beats up people and they, we go to church and we're not changed because the enemy's stealing the word. You better watch out. how, How does it not get? And we're going to learn. It's got to get down in your heart. It's got to, it's got to get down deep in your heart. You got to treasure it. You got to fight for it. You got to talk about it. You got to rehearse it. It's more important than anything else. It, it, it starts crowding out your hobbies. It starts crowding out your free time. It starts crowding out what you, because it begins to take root. It's that little seed that is sown in you that begins to take over. That's another parable. The, the Bible says that the word of God is like leaven. It begins to move through the whole dough. It moves through the whole house. That's what the gospel does. That's what the word does. The word is not content with just a little part of your life he wants to move through it all how many want it, God to move through it all right so the enemy comes and we pretend we're okay we pretend well I'm good I don't need this hey listen you know who the most needy people on the earth are us as believers we because our we our only our source is Jesus we can't go to any other source we, we, we are a- absolutely needy. It's kind of like this light right here thinking it's not needy to be plugged in. I mean, it can think it's not needy, but the minute it's unplugged, ah, it, it's gone. And this is what many of us are. We're believers, but we aren't plugged in, and we have no light. We, we, there's no light. There's no source. Our only source is Jesus. How des- this thing is desperately in need of this electricity, or it will have no power and no life and no source. Are you with me? So this is what we got we to make sure the enemy is not stealing the word from us. And let me just tell you this. Don't, don't think just because you listen to a lot of stuff that you're getting changed. You better hear what you hear and let it get in your heart and let it begin to produce fruit. And so the other day I was meeting with someone, I can't remember meeting with so many people, but here's the question I asked them and the Lord asked me, what is the Lord saying to you? What is the Lord saying? You're his child. His sheep hear his voice. What is he saying to you? If he's not saying anything to you, the devil is stealing the stuff that God wants to say to you to change you. I mean, I'm not going to let the devil. So slow down. Stop. Get your Bible. Get your journal. Begin to write down. This is what God is. Every believer ought to be able to say, answer this question. What is God saying to you? What's he saying to you? I remember when I was a new Christian, we had, there was a girl that had been a Christian longer than me, and she was more on fire than me. And every time I met, every time I met up with her, she said, Trey, what's Jesus saying to you? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, but 
I started thinking because I knew I was going to see her and I had to have some answer. But what if we just begin to ask, what's Jesus saying to you? I mean, that's a great question because we have to start processing it. Not what is he saying to me, but what is he saying to you? Because that's where the life is. That's where the devil gets defeated. When you have faith and you say, the devil is under my feet. The devil is defeated in my life. The devil's defeated in my street, in my family, in my city, in my kids' school. He's defeated there in Jesus' name. I mean, let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Number two is the rocky soil. Okay, here's what happens here. We'll read it in just a minute. But they hear and receive the word with joy. Okay. But they lack root. And because of tribulation and persecution, it causes them to fall away. It causes them to fall away. It means like they, 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 they hear it and they go, Pastor, you're right. You're right, and we have an altar call, and they're up here at the front going, you're right, pastor. That would, that, Lord, yes, I need conviction, I need salvation. And they leave, and they forget. They go home, and there's no difference. Because the fear of tribulation or the fear of persecution is like, what will my friends at work think? What will my friends that I party with think if I start telling them about Jesus? Listen, you've got, to, you've got to put a stake in the ground and say, no, I follow Jesus and I want you to know it. You've got to declare with your mouth that he is Lord. You've got to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, but you've got to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. How many know what I'm talking about? When I first got saved, I went to... Uh, my friend that we used to party with, and I, I don't know, I found my, the biggest Bible we could find in our house. You know those big old Bibles that you put, your mom puts out and no one ever opens, you know? Those big old ones. And I grabbed it and I brought it with me and I put it in between the seats of where we were going to sit. And he got in the car and he goes, what's that? I said, dude, that's a Bible. He goes, yeah, I know, what's it doing in here? I said, Mike, I got to tell you, man, I met Jesus and I'm different. And he's everything to me. You know what he said to me? This was like in June or July. You know what he said to me? He said, oh, Trey, by September, you're going to be back partying with us. I promise you. September, man, I was starting a Bible study at Bryan High School. Amen? For Jesus. Amen? Because the word that got into me that summer was not like it was all those other days I went to church. All of a sudden, there was a, a fruit that began to work in me. Let's look at verse 16 and 17. And the ones that are sown on the rocky ground... The ones who, when they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy. They receive it. This is the hard thing about when people get saved at church. You know how you know if they get saved? It takes time to know. I, don't, I promise you, I've done this for 25 years right here in Austin, Texas, right here with this church. There's people that say, you say, that person, I promise you they were saved. And then in a few weeks, you don't even know where they are. Because there's no fruit. And he says they have no root in themselves. They have no root. The, 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 the word didn't take root in there, but they endure for a while. Then tribulation comes, and they get, then things happen that are difficult that they don't like, and they start saying, what's going on here? I don't know what's going on. God must not be good because these things are happening. And all of a sudden, they begin to these lies, and all of a sudden, the word is stolen from them. Or persecution, like I talked about, is that people start making fun of them because they're Christian. What are you doing, man? Come do the things we used to do. Come on. You know why people do that? Because they are convicted by your change. You know why people want to pull you down? So, you know, they won't feel guilty. This is how clueless I was and how lost I was as a young child. One of my dear friends uh, growing up, Scott Wall, he, was, he got at our church. Our, the church I grew up in was so dead that if someone died in the choir loft, they'd have to carry out three rows to find out who was actually dead. <laughs> it was dead. It was dead. So at our church, they had, uh, we had, uh, we had uh, I can't even remember the name. What's it called when you're about seventh grade? They take you through this class to, to get you all straightened out. What's it called? What is it called? Confirmation. confirmation. And he was a year ahead of me, so he went through confirmation the year before I did. And I was so afraid that he was going to get changed because I didn't want him to. So, but, but I realized that at least in our church, confirmation didn't really change anybody. So he came out just as lost as he went in, and I was so happy. Because I was afraid that he was going to get on fire for the Lord, and I'd be convicted, and I didn't like that. So you know what people do? That when you start getting on fire, they want to pull you back down. They want to pull you down. 
because they don't want to be convicted by you. But hey, listen, don't do that. Just stay with Jesus. You're going to pull them up. Amen? In time, we're going to pull them up. Oh, no. I don't care how long you fight me. I don't care how long you fight me. There's a word inside of me that's not going away. The roots are going down deep, and they're not going to be pulled out by all these little trials and by your persecution. In fact, trials and persecution make the true child of God deeper and stronger than they've ever been. Amen? Bring them on! Bring them on! Woo! But for the person that is not true in the Lord and not sincere with the Lord and not strong in the Lord, trials begin to kill their faith. Number three, the third soil is the thorny soil. You can write this down. The thorny soil are those who hear, every one of them hear. <laughs> But the cares of the world, these are three things that begin to choke it out, okay? The cares of the world, the love of money, and the love of other things begin to choke it out. Now, the, sec the first soil, the enemy stole it. The second soil, they fell away. That's how it describes it. They fell away. The second soil fell away. They fell away from the Lord. They looked like they were going to make it and on fire, looked like they were producing fruit, but they fell away. They fell away. The third soil because of the cares of this world and the love of money and the love of other things, the Word of God is literally choked out. They receive it, but it's choked out by the thorns. It's choked out. The first one, the enemy gets it. The second one, they fall away. And the third one, the, these things choke it out. Now listen. Listen to what can happen to the Word that you're receiving today is that small things can become big things and choke it out. It says... In verse 18 and 19, why don't you read it with me out loud, ready? And others, read with me. And others are the ones sown among thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things enter in and choke the word and it proves, proves it unfaithful, unfruitful. So listen, three things, cares, cares of the world. Oh, I got to do stuff. Jesus offered some men to be his disciple, and they said, no, because i got to go take care of my oxen. I just bought a new car. i got a new relationship. i got to go take care of my family. I gotta do How many of us are missing the, the deep things of God because of the cares of this world? It, it's not the devil. Now it's you. I mean, oh, Lord. Woo! It's not the devil. It's you and me saying, oh, no, these cares are, I know, I'd go to prayer at 10 p.m., but, you know, i got to get my sleep. The cares of the world begin to choke out the Word of God. It's no longer the devil, but it's you and me making these choices. The devil might be tempting us, of course, but we're making the church choices to say, you know what, these cares. Yeah, but, uh, you know, we got to be responsible we got to do this, we got to do that, and all of a sudden we justify ourselves into mediocrity. We, we justify ourselves into living like every other person, just like them. You know what I realize reading history and seeing it, looking around our city? When someone's on fire, something begins to break out. Something begins to crash out of the ordinary in their lives. When the, I mean, I promise you, I told you the story, but the house, three houses down from ours, caught on fire. And I promise you, I met more neighbors that night than I've ever seen in the 20 years I've been there. They start coming out of the woodwork, and they sit there and they stand. Look at that. The house is on fire. Yeah, it's on fire. Firemen are there doing their job, and we're all like, that's amazing. That fire's house on fire. I hope mine doesn't catch on fire. <laughs> You're sitting there for 20 or 30 minutes, and then... then what happened was, I guess because of the, the sparks and stuff still in the house, two days later it caught on fire again and we had another reunion in the neighborhood. <laughs> when things are on fire, people take notice and it breaks out. I promise you, when you get on fire, it's, it's going to cause you to break out. You may be in, in the job you're in or the neighborhood, you know, all of a sudden you're going to break out. It's different. When I got saved, all of a sudden I started to say, somebody's got to lead a Bible study at the school, Lord. And he says, you do. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to do that. He says, yep, I'm calling you to do it. When God told me about prayer, I says, Lord, somebody's got to lead this prayer movement in the city. God says, you're going to do it. And I said, Lord, I don't want to do it. I want somebody else to do it. And he says, no, I've called you to do it. 
You start doing things you've never done because there's a fire inside of you. But the, listen to these three simple little bitty enemies. Cares of the world. The love of money. Oh, if I go off for Jesus, I can't get a promotion. If I go for Jesus, I'll lose clients. If I go for Jesus, then he's going to make me give this money that I love away. Oh, during the offering part, I go like this. La, 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 la. You know, you not tithing may be costing you your spiritual life. Because it says here, you can't love God in money. You say, well, you just deal with it yourself, all right? But one of the thorns that is killing the growth of the word in you is the love of money. And the only, only antidote for the love of money is to give it away. All right? And I'll just say to you, we desperately need it, but I don't, you don't even have to give it to us. You give it away to somebody. You give it away to something God wants you to give it to. You give it away and God will begin to change your heart. He'll begin to say, I'm the Lord and I'll show you how I provide. Listen, the Christian life is a miracle and we must lead miracles. Don't ever, don't ever, ever feel discouraged that you need a miracle. The whole Bible is one miracle after another. One miracle after another. And the Christianity is one miracle to the next miracle. Amen? That's how it rolls from one to the other. And so we need to live so we need a miracle. I mean, the, God led the children of Israel to leave after Pharaoh was trying to keep them in there. And, and he let them out. And he says, this is the way you go. Follow me. I'll cloud by day, fire by night. And he leads them right up to the Red Sea. Like, Lord, we can't go anywhere. And we hear the enemy's coming. He says, that's all right. He says, take that staff you have in your hand and, and speak and part the Red Sea. And the most talked about miracle rehearsed over and over in the Old Testament is the parting of the Red Sea and the children of Israel going through it because it now is a picture of our salvation. How God parts the sea of death and takes his children through there, puts blood on the door and protects us. And the children of God walk, go through the water into a new land. Amen? Amen. Hey, on the other side of your biggest trial is your greatest victory. The Lord told me today that we gotta, we got to live such that we need miracles. We don't want to, I mean, the American way, <laughs> the American way is that you live so that you don't need miracles. Oh, I got plenty of money here, and I got this over here, and you come here, here, I got my, I'll shoot you, I got that here, I got this over here, I got my alarm, I got... We need to live like we need miracles. We need miracles. I'm not saying for you to live stupid. I'm just saying, please understand that you and I have a God who loves to do miracles. The love of money and the love of other things. If it's not enough just to say the love of money and the cares of the world, it's just the love of other things. Do you know some people are going to miss God and go to hell only because they loved other things? And that other thing could have been their family that they loved before God. That other thing could have been golf. It could have been their job. I mean, it's a good thing to love your job, but to love it more than God, all of a sudden it steals the Word of God and chokes it. I wonder how many people sitting here listening to me today or, or watch this online today will say, you know what, what's choking the Word for me is not something evil, it's something good. But it's still in the wrong place. And so it's stealing the Word of God. It's choking it out. It's killing, I mean, choking the Word of God out. Ah! cannot believe we allow that in our lives. So Holy Spirit, would you begin to reveal to us what's choking the word? The final soil, verse 20, it's really simple. It's the only one that's good. But those who were sown on the good soil, the seed that was sown on the good soil, are the ones who hear, say they hear. Every one of them has heard. Every one of them has heard so far. So hearing the message today means nothing means nothing. Three out of four people that hear the word, I mean, if you take this literally, three out of the four people that hear the word here in most churches today, it'll, it'll get taken. But they, the ones on good soil, they hear the word and they accept it. I looked up that word. They welcome it. 
They embrace it. They say, no, 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 this word is for me. You know that part that was convicting today? That was for me. You know that part of the love of other things getting choked and the word getting choked? That's for me. I needed to hear that. Did you know I needed to hear that? I needed to hear that. God, I needed to hear that, Lord. Please show me. That word's for me. Lord, I don't want your word choked out in my life. I don't want to fall away. I don't want the enemy to steal. I want to be good. I want to accept it. I want to welcome it. I want to embrace it. I want to think about it. I want to pray about it. I want it to begin to crowd out other things. I want it to take root in me. I want to to teach it. I want others to know about it. I want it to take deep root in my life so that nothing else ever comes near me that is not influenced by this word that he put inside of me. They accept it. Listen, family. The accepting of the Word of God in the life of a believer is the, the, the key to producing fruit in your life. Now listen, I, 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 we're about to pray, but I want to tell you there's two ways you read the Word of God. Number one, you read it for encounter with Jesus or encounter with the Father. or with encounter, You read the Word to encounter the person. You don't read the Word for history or knowledge or insight. You read it to encounter Him. And sometimes He says, Trey, you got this sin in your life. You need to get it out so you can encounter me deeper. Trey, you need to do this. You read it for encounter and you read it for obedience. Every day when you read the Word of God, you say, Lord, I've read this paragraph or this chapter, what in here do I need to do? Well, you need to forgive someone. We'll call them and forgive them or write them or forgive them in your heart. Or you know what, Trey? You need to give money to that person. Okay. I don't know if I have it. He says, I told you to give it. Okay. Well, I'm going to give it. What do I need to do today? You know what you need to do today? You need to do something. You need to fast today. Lord, I don't want to fast today. Yep, I'm calling you to fast today. I just told you what I wanted you to do today. This is how it takes root in your life. And all of a sudden you're changed. All of a sudden you're living a dynamic Christian life where God's speaking to you and you're doing it. God's speaking to you and you're doing it. God's speaking. So the, the dangerous thing is that you hear from God and you don't do it. You hear from God and you put it on the shelf and you say, that's a nice sermon. And you go home and you didn't do it. That's what's most dangerous. And that's why America's in the state it's in. We've heard it, but we've not done it. We've not obeyed it. We've not obeyed God. So start today. Before you get out of the parking lot, open your Bible, and you've heard the word today, and say, God, what do I need to do about this? Let's pray. Let's pray. There's people here that you know the enemy's been stealing the word of God from your life because you've been allowing him to steal. You know it's it's, it's hit, but it's been stolen. You're here today, and you say, you know what, Pastor? You know what, Lord, I, I... I can no longer allow the Word of God to be stolen from my life. I say, Lord, today, I want you to produce fruit in my life. If you're here today and you know the enemy's been stealing the Word of God from you, just stand on your feet right where you are. Just stand on your feet right where you are. You say, the enemy's been stealing the Word out of my heart, but today I say no more. Yep, all over the room. There you go. There you go. There's others of you here that you're going to say, you know what, Pastor? I know that that my heart has been rocky soil and tribulation... And persecution has been causing me to fall away. Stand on your feet. Tribulation and persecution has been hitting you and causing you to fall away. Stand on your feet. It's been causing you to move away from the Lord because of tribulation and persecution. Just stand on your feet. There's a whole host of us that fall into this category. The thorny soil. We say, hey, if you're here in the cares of this world, in the love of money or the fear of not having enough or the love of other things. If that's been spoken out the word, stand on your feet and say, today, today, Lord, I hear this word and it's for me. I hear it and it's for me. I hear it and it's for me. I'll say this to the Lord. Say, I hear it and it's for me. Amen? What we're going to do just for the next couple minutes, if you're standing up, I want to invite you to get on your knees or come to the front. I love to move somewhere, to go to the cross and begin to deal with God over this. Begin to deal with God and say, God, you've spoken to me about this, so I want to deal with you on it. I want to pray about this. I want you to pour into me. Come on, right now, let's move. Let's just begin to fill this altar. Come on, begin to go to the cross. Those of you that are standing up and say, Lord, I want to go deeper on this. I don't want it just to just, I can't let it be surface. I can't let it just barely hit me. It's got to hit me deeply, Lord. It's got to hit me deeply, Lord.
in this attitude of prayer. Father, today we want your Holy Spirit to move upon our hearts so that the Word takes a deep root and we're broken by it. Yes. So we don't rush. I want to go ahead and dismiss those that need to go. Dismiss those that have children so we can go and grab our kids. If you want to bring them back in here for some time of prayer, you can do that. But I dismiss you, okay? You're dismissed today to go. If you have children, please go get them. Thank the teachers. But we're going to have a season of just pressing in for a while here and saying, Lord, this has got to take root. This has got to take root. I've got to produce fruit. Come on. Let's just keep singing. Our God reigns. Come on, let's sing. Let's press in. If you want to press in, come up to the front or kneel down or get in your chair. Just begin to say, God, I've got to have more. I'm not settling for less than more today. I've got to have more.
Será Jesus be lifted up Be lifted up Jesus be lifted up Be lifted up Be lifted up Break out in our lives, in our families, in our neighborhood, in our city in a fresh way. Thank you, Lord.
finish up, but let, let's just, I want the Lord to be lifted up over our city, over our church, over our lives. We're just going to sing that chorus we did earlier, just ask the Lord to be lifted up and that we would worship Him. This is how we're going to conclude today, if you're still here. Let's just, we're going to conclude with being worshipers. We're going to worship God in spirit and in truth. These are kind of the worshipers the Father seeks. I just want to sing that chorus. Let's be lifted up over our lives, over our family, over our children, over our city, over our schools, over our government, over our nation, over our world, over different countries of the earth. Come on, let's just sing, be lifted up. Be lifted up. Yes, Lord, over us. Be lifted higher. Be lifted up, be lifted up over everything in our lives. Be lifted up, be lifted higher, be lifted. Be lifted higher. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. Jesus, be lifted up. Be lifted up. Be lifted up Be lifted higher Be lifted up Be lifted higher I want to thank you for staying to press in. It shows that there's a hunger. We've been doing this church a long time. There's a, it's one of the biggest responses of people staying after pressing in for more of God. I know that you want more of God and God wants to give more of himself to you more than you want more of him. How many want to say, I'll receive it, Lord. I'll receive it, Lord. Well, let's sing that let the praises fill this temple. Come on, let's just say, Lord, we're, we're going to finish with some praises, Lord. We want our praises to fill the temple yeah. of our lives, of this world. Let our praises fill this temple. Let our praises fill this temple. Let our praises fill this temple. For you are good. And Jesus, and let And let our praises fill this temple. Let our praises fill this temple. For you are good. Come on, let's just say thank you, the Lord, for a great day, a great service. Amen. Lord, Father, what you started in us today or what you continue today do deeper when we go home, Lord. Lord, let it go deeper when we go home. Let it go deeper in the night, Lord, and wake up in the morning. Let it be deeper, Lord. Let the Word of God take root in our lives. Lord, we pray over the person next to us. Come on, just reach over and touch someone next to you. Lord, we pray for a hundredfold return today. A hundredfold return, Lord. A hundredfold return in their lives. We, 30 and 60 are great, Lord, but we want a hundred. We want a hundredfold return, God, in the life of this brother or sister next to us, this, this child or this, this friend, Lord, a hundredfold of Jesus' fruit in our lives, Lord, for the glory of your name. We thank you for today, Lord. And all God's people said, come on, let's give the Lord a hand as we go. Amen. Amen. <laughs>